ready to set up flow logging in your own Salesforce instance in less than 10 minutes? Hi, awesome admins. I'm Kate Lassard, lead admin evangelist on the admin relations team at Salesforce and your host of Kate Clicks Through It, where we don't just talk Salesforce, we click through it. If you're anything like me and you learn best by doing, you're in the right place. Each episode will walk through a backend process step by step so that you can level up your Salesforce admin skills like a pro. Ready to dive in? Let's click through it. Let's set the stage. You log into your email to start your workday and you have a dreaded flow error message. For the most part, your scheduled flow ran successfully, but you have a few records that you're not sure why they were unsuccessful. In the past, you would have to put on your detective hat and start doing some deep dive analysis into what happened with those records. Now with flow logging, you can easily pinpoint why these records failed and what you need to do to fix them. Flow logging is a feature that captures detailed information in data cloud about each time a flow runs. So whether it's a success, a partial success, or a failure, you have detailed data without having to dig into debug logs or recreate the issue. Think of it as a built-in flight recorder for your flow, letting you know what paths were taken, what elements were executed, and where things went wrong. And you can do this all in a standard Salesforce report that's easy to create and view from your org. This means that you can troubleshoot faster, you can share insights with your teammates, and you can even spot patterns in failures before they become bigger issues. Best of all, you can determine which flows have flow logging turned on so that you're only capturing the data that you care about. Let's see it in action by turning on flow logging in our org and creating the report together so we can put this to use. For those of you clicking along with me, you can be in any org with data cloud enabled because persistent flow logging uses data cloud credits. So it can be a developer edition or a sandbox. I also want to make sure that you already have a flow created in this org. You'll see I'm starting off in setup and I have searched for flow and I'm on the setup flows page. Uh, it can be any flow. I'm going to use a simple record triggered flow called case escalation updates. So let's scroll down. I'm going to open up that flow here. In a nutshell, this flow is triggered by the case object when a case is escalated, and then it's taking action to update related records. So if I open up our criteria here, you can see this is when it is created or updated, and then when that case is escalated. I have two paths. I have one path that is going to run immediately, as well as a scheduled path to update the related contact. Okay, let's turn on flow logging. We start by opening up flow properties, which is going to be this gear icon. It looks much like our setup icon right at the top of our page. And I'm going to click show advanced. All right, now we scroll down on our edit version properties all the way to this section that says set up persistent logging for this org. So you'll notice that there is a disclaimer here warning you that this feature will use data cloud credits. I'm okay with that, so let's click the button to start our installation. Now this can take a minute to install, so if you're clicking along beside me, try it out in your own org and I'll wait. Once the installation is complete, which can take five to 10 minutes, we get a success message and can check the box to turn on flow logging for this specific flow. An important call out here is that you only need to install persistent logging one time in your Salesforce instance, but you will need to individually check the box for flows where you want to use this feature. On the flip side, you can uncheck the box for flows where you no longer need to utilize this feature. You'll continue to see the disclaimer about data cloud credit consumption each time, which is really helpful if you work at an organization with a team of admins to make sure that everyone is aware of the implications of using persistent flow logging on your automations. Turning this feature on is easy, but how do you put this to work to help troubleshoot flow errors in your org? On the flow properties, we saw the disclaimer that flow logging uses data cloud credits. 
That's because all this impactful log data is stored in data streams and data model objects, or DMOs. So let's head over to Data Cloud and take a look behind the scenes. I'm going to just search for Data Cloud in my app launcher and open. I'm going to use Data Explorer to open up our DMO of Flow Element Run. So I'm going to keep the default data space uh, in object here. I'm going to search for our data model object or DMO and search for flow element run. There you have it. All this rich data that you can dive into. You can also look at the flow run DMO. So if I switch this over to just flow run. Uh, and this would be helpful if you were looking for any spiking data. This would be a great place to get additional insights. So if Data Cloud is where you are comfortable, this might be where you spend your time digging into the data. But I want to click through making this a bit easier to interpret for admins. So I'm going to head back to Service Cloud. And let's create a report. Reporting on the logs is where all of this data becomes really powerful. So let's create one together. When we install persistent flow logging, we get access to the flow run with flow element report type. So I'm going to create a new report. You see that I've looked at this recently, but if I hadn't, we can click all and just start to type in flow. And we're going to go with the flow run with flow element. That's what I want. Start report. So we have a blank slate to start with, and I'm going to walk you through what I think is an impactful way to look at this data and then show you how you can customize this. So I want to start grouping my data. Uh, I'm going to group by flow version. So flow version is going to be the ID of the flow that I ran. Then I'm going to group by flow run ID. Flow run ID is the specific run of the flow. So this is important for the example flow that we're working on because if you recall, it had both an immediate path and a scheduled run path. So we have two flow run IDs for that flow. And finally, I'm going to add in context record ID in my grouping. This is the record that the flow is running on or updating. So in our case, this is going to be that case record ID. Hopefully that is clearer than mud. It's going to be helpful to see this with real run data in your org. So once we have those grouping set up, let's start adding in some columns. Some things that I find to be helpful are flow run status. That will tell us if our flow finished or if it aired out. We're going to add in flow elements. That's going to help us identify which path we're reviewing. I'm going to add in completed time. And I'm going to do this for the actual element run. I'm going to add in flow execution duration in milliseconds. And I'm going to add in flow element run status. So that is going to help us identify which element has failed in that case of an error. And this is where the magic really happens for us admins. So let's save and run. All right, here we go. Now we have our report that's easy for us to identify and dive into. We can see our different flow run status, the actual flow element, and then a little bit of information on our completed date and time, our execution duration, and then that really important piece, that flow element run status. So luckily for me, it looks like all of these have completed. I don't see any that are erroring out. So my flow is working really well. If I go back to the report edit page, I just want to call out that there are a lot of different fields that you can add in here, both for the flow run itself, as well as 
for the flow element run. So there are lots of different fields that you can play around with adding into your report, uh, things that might be really helpful to you. So take your time, customize this, and get the information you need. Now you might be thinking, hey, wouldn't it be really great to have this report pull into an admin dashboard so that I can keep a close eye on my automations? Let's take a look at what that might look like. I'm gonna head to dashboards and I've created one called admin tracking. So I built this out to give you an idea of how you can work this into your regular CRM product management reviews. Think about having a quick place to reference how many flows ran in your org, the success rates and insights into your errors. And what a great way to show the value of what you have built to your stakeholders. As Salesforce admins, this is huge. Instead of spending hours trying to reproduce errors or combing through massive debug logs, you can instantly see the point in your flow where something went wrong and you can do something about it. We're empowered to troubleshoot faster, to reduce downtime for our users, and to keep the business running smoothly. In short, less guesswork and more confidence. That's a wrap on this click through. If you found this helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and also let us know in the comments what click throughs you'd like us to do together in the future. Until then, keep clicking and keep learning.